We are going to be solving problems using quadratic models. In the past two sections, 7.5 and 7.7, .7, we looked at how to solve quadratic equations. And we will be revisiting this as we get into word problems. So step number one is if you're solving a problem, the first thing that you must do is represent what you're solving for with a variable. Okay, or with an expression. Uh, step number two is you would like to determine an equation to represent the problem. So we need some sort of equation that we need to solve. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to represent the equation in standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. That will look familiar to section 7.5 or 7.7. .7. And the next thing would be to solve by factoring which is 7.5 or using the quadratic formula. It doesn't matter which of these methods you decide to use. Um, so if we go back to section 7.5 and 7.7, .7, let me just show you uh, what we did there. What we did in 7.5 is we had to make one side equal zero. So that's why you're seeing what we're doing in word problems is exactly the same. Our problem solving is at some point getting into standard form. 7.5 was solved by factoring. So once you had an equation equaling 0, you would factor. And in 7.7, .7, you're solving the same type of problems. However, once you had it in standard form, just like we do right here, as you can see where my pen is, uh, we used a quadratic formula where we were substituting a value for a, b, and c into a formula and solving that way. But irregardless, we have to have standard form. And the same thing is true for this section once we have an equation. And then we can solve using either method. All right, so we're just going to solve one question. The question says, determine three consecutive odd integers if the square of the largest integer is 33 less than the sum of the squares of the two smaller integers. So the first thing that we need to do is determine three, how to represent three consecutive odd integers algebraically. And the way to do that is we are going to let the first odd integer be 2x plus 1. The reason for that is that is that 2 times anything plus 1 is always odd. 2 times 1 plus 1 is odd. 2 times 2 plus 1 is odd. 2 times 3 plus 1 is odd. 2 times 4 plus 1 is odd. If we just represented odd number with x, that would actually also represent even numbers because even numbers uh, are included in x. But odd numbers can be represented by 2x plus 1. Now, the next consecutive odd integer would be 2 more than that. So uh, the next odd integer would be 2x, but it would be 2 more than the first one. So that's 2x plus 3. That's your second odd number. Uh, your third odd number, then, would be 2 more than that. It would be 2x plus 5. So the first difficulty is represent what you're solving for with a variable. The next part is determining an equation, which is also difficult. So let me break this down into parts. Let's go ahead and represent the square of the largest integer. <clears throat> so the square of the largest integer would be, well, here's our largest integer, 2x plus 5. So the square of the largest integer would be 2x plus 5 squared. OK, so there's a start. Uh, the next thing might be for you to recognize that the word is means equals. So the square of the largest integer is 33 less. So if we do 33 less, 33 less than something is whatever that is minus 33. 33 less is not 33 minus. 33 less than something is something, whatever it is, minus 33. So this is 33 less than something. <coughs> and the last part, the bracket part there, is then the sum of the squares of the two smaller integers. Sum means adding. And the squares of the two smaller integers would be this. <clears throat> here's one of the smaller integers. And here's the other smaller integer. So one of the big difficulties when we're problem solving is coming up with an equation. So this right now represents the square of the largest integer is 
33 less, as you can see with the minus, minus 33, 33 less than the sum, which is adding, of the squares of the two smaller integers. So we now have an equation. Now the third thing is, is to get rid of all the brackets and get this in standard form. So basically to simplify this as much as possible. So let's go ahead and start doing that. Uh, I'm going to do it relatively quickly. You can follow my thinking. Uh, 2x plus 5 squared is 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5. 2x plus 1 squared is 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. And 2x plus 3 squared is 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. And then we have a minus 33. So let me go ahead and start color coding this for you. First of all, this would be 4x squared plus 10x plus 10x plus 25 equals, and the next part I'll do in red. If we did this distribution, it would be 4x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 1. And then plus, and the next distribution I will do in green, it would be 4x squared <clears throat> plus 6x plus 6x plus 9. And then we find, finally have a minus 33. So the first thing I might do is start collecting like terms. So on your left-hand side, you could follow this slowly or pause the video if you like, or maybe start collecting like terms on your own. The left-hand side, I can collect the 10x's to make 20x. On the right-hand side, a 4x squared plus a 4x squared is an 8x squared. <clears throat> if I collect all the terms that have x in them, I would have a total of 16x. And if I collect the constant terms, I would have negative 23. Okay? All right. So next, we have to make one side equal 0. So what I'm going to do is subtract 4x squared. I'm going to subtract or do the opposite of all the terms that are on the left-hand side. So at this point in time, we have 0 is equivalent to 4x squared minus 4x minus 48. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do in this case, there's two methods you could use. So at this point, we are done. As you can see, we are done with step number three. So we can solve this by factoring or using the quadratic formula. What I'm going to do is solve this by factoring. If you're using the quadratic formula, which you could look at the previous lessons for, you'd use a value of a being 4, of b being negative 4, and of c being negative 48. Uh, but I'm going to factor this relatively quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor out a greatest common factor. Of 4. So if I divide all those terms by 4, I'll be left with x squared minus x minus 12. And then what I can do is factor this particular remaining trinomial. So if I factor that, I'll have x squared and a minus 12 and a minus x. So my two factors would be x and x. And I would have minus 4 and plus 3 because those two add up to negative 1 and multiply to negative 12. So in this case, we're getting closer. We would have x minus 4. Might want to look back at section 7.5 as to what to do now. But x minus 4 times x minus 3 equals 0. So our solutions here would either be x equals 4 or x equals negative 3. Now, have we answered the question? The question here states... Determine three consecutive odd integers. <clears throat> well, 4 and negative 3 are not three consecutive odd integers. Those are the values for x. So what we actually know is that the odd numbers are represented by these three expressions. So we have to apply x to those three odd numbers. So we know, uh, let's go ahead and, and apply the red 4 to those expressions. We know that the first odd number is 2x plus 1. We know the second odd number is 2x plus 3, and the third odd number is 2x plus 5. Okay, so those three consecutive numbers would be 9, 11, and 13. That's one set of answers.
Okay. Uh, your other set of answers, again, the expressions for the odd numbers are 2x plus 1, 2x plus 3, and 2x plus 5. So our other set of answers would be 2x plus 1. x in this case is negative 3. The other one is 2x plus 3. And the other odd number is 2x plus 5. So in this particular case, we would have solutions of negative 5, of negative 3, and negative 1. So in answer to the question, which says determine three consecutive odd integers, there's actually two possibilities. Uh, one set would be 9, 11, and 13. It's one set of three consecutive odd integers that follow those uh, parameters. And the other set of three consecutive odd numbers would be negative 5, negative 3, and negative 1.